Welcome to The Liberating Secret with your host, author and teacher, Sylvia Pierce. The Liberating Secret is dedicated to revealing the mystery of the gospel, which is Christ in you, the only hope of glory. Let's join Sylvia Pierce for today's lesson. Welcome to The Liberating Secret. My name is Sylvia Pierce, and I'm so glad to be with you again today. I hope you've been watching this series that my wonderful and great friend Bill Bauer and I are doing on this program, The Liberating Secret. This is true liberation from the, for the body of Christ. This is a gift to the body of Christ that can only be received by faith because it's a gift. And it's nothing we can boast about or nothing that we've done to self-improve in order to know this gift or have this gift. It's simply by receiving, not by achieving. That's what we've been talking about. And also, we've been bringing out some questions. You know, a lot of people say, Bill, this is a process. Maybe one of these days we'll get sanctified. Maybe, you know, we've got, to, we've got to, you know, there's a verse even that says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Well, is it a, so it's like a hard process. Is it a process? You or know, is it a fact? You know, it's a fact, Sylvia, and it's all about a person. And um, there is a working out. But what I found out, the difficulty that I ran into was uh, because I had a false concept of what man was, I thought it was just me with a life of my own. And that me was a terrible me and a me that I needed to get fixed up and changed and uh, was my flesh was evil and everything about me was bad and I needed to somehow get that changed. Mm -hmm. My focus was on the self, false self that I thought I was apart from Jesus. It's a false independent self, uh, a self by itself, a self uh, with a life of its own I thought. I didn't know that was a satanic lie I was believing and so because I was I was so stuck on this false self well of course there has to be a process I've got to get this sin out of me I've got to change I got to get more holy more holy because I'm a, look at me this false bad me I'm really not holy uh, you know I need to get this changed and fixed up and become more holy and so I thought, well, I, yeah, there's got to be some kind of prophecy, I've got, process. I've got to sanctify this terrible, unsanctified self that I am. I've got to get the evil out of me, the bad out of me, and, and get this sanctified. Because I believed a lie that I was, I, I was just me, and it was a really bad me. I had this false nature of my own. This, uh, I was still the old man. I was still, I was still, a, I had this sin nature that was really me, and I had to somehow get rid of that. <laughs> Good luck with that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and so, uh, that's what I was focused on. I, right. I was focused on this false self, and so there, therefore I thought, obviously, it has to be a process. But then when I discovered that Jesus Christ was my sanctification, my perfection, that He at the cross, when He died, uh, he died, and I died with him. He died as me. So in his body on the, on the cross, when he died, and I was identified with his body, out of him and me <laughs> came that uh, false nature, that uh, sin nature, that old man, that right. uh, flesh nature with its lust and everything, which was a separate power, which was really a satanic power, that went out of him and out of me at the cross. And so in that sense, it was a done deal. All of a sudden he began, then I rose with him. Mm -hmm. I always tell people, folks, I always tell people that when he rose, I rose. And he did not rise with my sin nature. Well, that is great. You know, he didn't rise. My old man went up with him. Uh, you know, I don't think so, I finally discovered. You know, no, that was terminated. And so when I went up with him, I, I got a new, I, I, I got a resurrected nature, a resurrected life in me. 
that now came in on me and came in me and now I was sanctified because he was my sanctification a resurrected life is pretty sanctified he was my sanctification he was my holiness all these things and that was a done deal and I was going to stand on the person and not be tempted to look within at a false person that had already been terminated. Hallelujah. I was going to stand on who he was and all he was and all that, that he, all that he was was who I was. And I was going to stand in that regardless of Sylvia, of my, of the appearances, my performance didn't look like it, didn't feel like it. I looked in the mirror. Are you sure? Yeah. You know, and I, but I was going to stand on that regardless of come hell or high water. I was going to say, Christ was living in me as it, as me, as if it's me. He's the real me. Christ that's is right. the, my true self. Right. It's not this false, independent self that's really satanic at bottom, making me think I'm just this horrible person. And I did come out of a lot of self-hatred because I thought I was just this bad self, and I hated that self, not knowing at bottom it was really the lie of Satan. It's really him. I was He was masquerading as me, wow. as this false, bad, horrible me. It wasn't even me. The real me is Christ. Or he was masquerading as a good me, trying to be the trying to do good. Right. He on. either masquerades as an evil. See, it's we're still eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. So, from his mind, and that's the sin that dwells in us in Romans seven. People say you never get. A sanctified flesh because sin always dwells in you no that is not true Christ was uh, uh, cleansed cleanse the sin out of us at Calvary because he condemned sin in the flesh you see so he didn't con he didn't take away flesh but he condemned the sin that was in the flesh that came out at Calvary so I don't have a sinful flesh you see we're always making a nature out of our flesh and a nature is not the cup. It's what's mm -hmm. the content in the cup. Yeah, that's really see, important. We, <laughs> it's very important. We've got that mixed up. We think nature is, uh, my, I've got a sinful, fleshly nature. So therefore, I always say we're actually giving ourselves permission to sin every day because we're operating from the law of sin and death. We're uh, actually operating from that. So Romans 7 is discovering this false power that has given me a false identity of a false self that I've always operated from, who was really Satan operating in me, in my members, it, it gives me the illumination, wow, that's not who I am. Yeah, that great. is not who I am at yeah. all. Christ is in me. Mm. Christ is now my new identity. Christ is the one that is my sanctification. And I love that because, let me quote that verse, it says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So we started talking about process. It does say work out your own salvation. What does that mean? It means work out of you what's already imparted in you in fullness that's already there. Because we, we you see, it's in renewing our mind to this truth all the time and putting our faith in that fact that really transforms us. It yes, is. Yes. It really does. That's what transforms us. Yes. We're not transformed by ourselves. Self can't give up self. Self can't transform self. Self that kind of self anyway is, is a satanic self anyway. You think he he'll let you be in proof for a little while. Yeah, right. But he, but see it's this big I, this independent I that we're constantly putting faith in. We think that's us. That's the lie of Romans seven. That is not us. That is Satan masquerading as a good me or a bad me. Yeah, that's right. So Paul says, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. That's right, Paul. But also, in my flesh dwelleth no bad thing. That's right. Because my flesh is only a container, a, a vessel. It's the body. It's the temple of the, of the Holy Spirit and, cannot, and not the producer, you see. That's the lie. Yeah, I was going to say, Sylvia, Sylvia is so good on that. I just I want to reiterate her point on that, that there's nothing wrong with our flesh, our body, That's our right. humanity. There's nothing evil in it. Like she said, he condemned sin in, in the, the flesh, flesh, in the humanity. He condemned sin, did con condemn the humanity, the flesh. He condemned no. sin. In the so flesh. that's such an important part. And the other part that she said where we tend to think that the flesh is a nature. Yeah. Uh, it's the cup. Again, yeah. the cup of coffee. 
it's the cup, you know. It, it's not the nature is is the coffee. Well, the nature is the power source. Yes. If I try to find my power source in my flesh, well, even like you know some of the programs we have today, they they teach you right away you're powerless in your flesh, right? Right. Okay, so your nature cannot be in your flesh because that's your power source. What is your power source? If it's in your flesh, you're going to operate from a false power. That's right. Uh, and, and a power that has invades you and lies to you and makes you think you have another, you have a powerful mm. of, uh, humanity that can overcome these things. And so we put all these high bars and we make all these promises to God and other yeah. people. And I'm never going to do it again. I'm always going to, you know, I'm going to try harder next time. One time I went to a prison, Bill. And there were like 200 men in this. It was a delight. It's always a delight for me when I go mm -hmm. into the jails because these are desperate people. And I realized the other day that Jesus' gospel, I mean, he says, the Spirit has anointed me to preach the gospel. Who to? It's to the brokenhearted. It's to, it's to lead the captives free. It's always people that know they're desperate. Maybe, you know, we don't realize we're desperate enough to really realize this. Yeah. Sometimes we have to get desperate enough to see it. Okay, I was in this prison, and I, I ministered this truth to these prisoners, and I love doing that. Well, when it was over, they were getting ready to leave. And I said to them, now, are you all going to try to be better next time? And they said, most of them said, yes, yes. And I said, you didn't hear a thing I said. <laughs> see? This is, sometimes yeah. this is hard to hear, yeah, Bill. It is. It's hard to hear because it takes the mind of the Spirit to pick. Yes. And it takes, you always call it threat, being threshed, being thrashed. Right. Like, you know, <laughs> things come in my life I can't conquer. What's wrong with me? Just like a Roman 7. Yes. So and another thing I want to discuss now, so we see the only process is renewing your mind to what, what the facts are. That's the only, there right. is, that's all we do. We just renew my mind that it, it already is. That's the real process. Yeah, that's the process. So uh, it says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out of you through renewing your mind to the truth of who you really are. And consider that a fact, you see, even though it doesn't feel like it. Okay? And then because the next verse says, because it is God within you willing and doing. Willing. Making choices mm -hmm. and doing, that's manifestation of his good pleasure. Wow. Mm, that's great. That's a huge. So let's talk a minute. Bit. You know, it's so easy to rise up and say, well, how do I make the right choice? How, do, how, how, how does choice come in? Mm -hmm. Because I've got a free will. All of us, you know, I've got a free will. So how can I make the right kind of choice? Right, Sylvia. And uh, I love what she was saying, that process is, is really about being renewed in the spirit of your mind to realize you've already got it. What he did, you've already got it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a discovery of who you already are yes. and what he's already done. You know, and, and then as you stand there, uh, I just wanted to add on a little just ending thing here. Uh, things in your outer life that, you know, were not Christ, the Holy Spirit, does they, they're swallowed up. Right. And all of a sudden they disappear as you stand on the truth of it. Your experience, as, as Sylvia said, lines up with what you're believing in the, you're really believing in a person, but it's the objective fact of what that person has done for you and is for you. And by standing on that, you know, your experience lines up in his time and his own way. Mm -hmm. You you don't want to touch that. You can't make it happen. Mm -hmm. Again, otherwise that's going back to uh, an the independent law. self and law mm -hmm. to try to get your experience to line up. So it's a scary thing at times because you're just standing there. You know, if you're struggling in an area of your life and you can't seem to get out of it, and you say, okay, well, I'm, I reckon I'm dead to sin. I'm dead to that thing. And I'm alive to Christ, uh, alive to God in Christ Jesus. He's my victory over that. I've got the victory. He's my victory. And you stand there, you know, so. Well, you know, oftentimes, most Christians know that we're justified by faith, by just simply receiving. Receptivity is really the function of the mm -hmm. human being. Mm -hmm. And so we know that, but then a lot of times we're taught, but we're sanctified by works, by what we do, by how to maintain our Christianity, by our choices that we make, mm -hmm. you see. 
So you see, when it comes back to me, then I'm then I'm right. I'm right back under the law again. See, when the onus comes back, well, then I have I I see. Faith is just simple receptivity. It's just agreeing with God. Now I heard you say this once, Bill, and I want you to reiterate that. You said choice became an idol to you. Yeah, choice did willpower. I think it, it's one of the greatest idols in the church today is is willpower, you know. And, um, you know, that's what Paul discovered in Romans 7. He said, to will is present with me, but the power to perform that I find not. So he had it. There's an element of freedom that's a receiving. Uh, it's a receiving freedom. It's a, you know, where, uh, but it's, it's, the power, he, he didn't have the power to perform. In other words, willpower, you know, was, was, he did not have, in fact, the more he would try to be good, that's a form of will, he would do good, the very opposite happened, you know, mm -hmm. because he was in his own willpower, and, and people always put that on you in the church today, say, well, it's your choice, it's your choice, and there is an element of choice, we'll, we'll clarify that, what we call what, what our choice is. But, you know, it would always be put on me like that. So then the whole thing went back on me. So I, I literally lived my life by choice, mm -hmm. uh, not by Jesus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't, not right. by trusting in Him. It was trusting in my choice, yes. which uh, really put me under law, which eventually made me do exactly the opposite thing of what I wanted to do. You know, like it did with Paul with his coveting problem, you know. When he, when he was trying to be good with his will to stop coveting, coveting, the very exact opposite happened to him. And so there is an element of choice, that's what we might call faith, and it's really an agreeing, as Sylvia was talking back about with the truth, with who you, what he's done for you, who you already are in Christ, and standing there, you know, when temptation comes, difficulties come, replacing uh, what you think you have to do with what he has done and is doing in you as you. That's right. Yes, well, when I, I just remember thinking to myself, we always connect will with power. They're like one word, it's like one with a dash maybe in between. Mm -hmm. But it's one reality, will, power. What I remember is the time came in my life when I realized I do have the will but I've got to separate it from, I've got to separate my will from power. And see, we don't think that way. We always think it's, well, if I've got the will, then I've got the power. So if we would separate will from power, then we know, well, yes, we have will, we have, but will is simple responding faith. That's all will is, is I'm just simply responding by faith. That's my will. I'm putting my will, you see, I will trust Jesus. I'm responding to his life, you see. That's all my will is, but I don't have the power of that life. That is an eternal life. That, that doesn't come from my flesh. That comes from the whole life, an eternal life of the person within me, you see. So I had to separate will from power. And, then, and Paul did that. He says, I have the will, but how to perform I find not, you see, which is what every Christian, if you're really honest about yourself, you'll say the same thing. Maybe you feel like, well, gosh, I've got the power to do all these things. Well, we always say, well, after a while, how's that going to work for you? What, how's it going to really pan out? How's yeah. it going to, how's it going to finish? I mean, is it you got to keep up that kind of outer fleshly perfection the rest right, of your life? Right. Because the Bible demands it. Yes. You know, we don't like to think of that because the Bible does say, "Be ye perfect, even as your heavenly Father is perfect." Jesus said that. Peter says that. So how to, see the problem is not what. So what is our perfection? Our perfection is our union with the perfect one who perfectly keeps mm -hmm. us. And Bill, I always like to say this. Yeah. I have a little, I'm gonna make a t-shirt out of this sometime. It's uh, the law is my trainer, my personal trainer. Personally trained me how weak my flesh was. So. It taught me that I needed a keeper because I could my flesh was too weak, and but then I realized, oh, I'm a kept woman because Christ is my keeper. It says that in Jude, 
it says unto him that is able to keep you from falling. So he is my keeper. So the law was my personal trainer, taught me that I have a keeper, so I'm a kept woman, you all. Okay, but then how to maintain that? Oh, I've got a permanent maintenance man. I've got a permanent maintenance man. So I love yeah, that. Great. I love that. That's a little, we ought to make a song out of that, really. <laughs> that could be a song. And that is the truth. You see, now when we really take that by faith, I want to tell you, there's going to be a new joy inside you. There's going to be peace that passes all understanding. There's going to be rest for your soul. There's not going to be striving any longer. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be striving to become. You're going to, be, you're going to learn to just be. You're just going to learn to be yourself. You're going to learn that, and I learned this, because I always hated my flesh, hated my humanity. It didn't measure up. It wasn't good enough. It was always not doing the right thing, you see. Well, you see, with the life of Christ, he, he, he illuminates he energize, his spirit energizes my humanity, mm -hmm. brings me alive to myself. Wow! I'm thinking, I'm pretty good. Yeah, now, right. not in myself, but you see, the goodness and righteousness of Christ is manifesting. We can't love ourselves until it's really the manifestation of the spirit of his very life in us. When he manifests his very life in us, you better believe we're going to love ourselves. Do you love yourself, Bill? Well, I, I really do. I do love myself. That was the amazing thing when the whole union reality uh, fixation happened to me. Uh, I got my humanity back, realized there wasn't anything evil or bad about my humanity. That it was a really uh, a beautiful expression of, of another, you know, mm -hmm. and that was so thrilling. But I, I just wanted to say, I, you know, when you're talking about, we were talking about performance and everything, you know, I was... Uh, really involved with performance-based Christianity. Mm -hmm. But we, we've mentioned that scripture that Paul said, to will is present with me, and here he uses the word, but to perform, uh, but the power to perform that, I find not. He uses perform that. Boy, to get that you're not the self that has power and will power to perform uh, takes quite a hammering on your head by the law uh, until you release the idea and you really oh he's a, working me both to will and to do to do he's the performer through me and and i i swear people think or the that, manifester he's the one I, yes see because i thought i had to manifest my own righteousness i had to manifest love so i would try hard to be loving oh, yeah. and every time i try hard to be loving i, I dislike the person a lot more and i think well no i can't do that i've got to confess that is sin or yeah. And I confess sin like every day. Oh, but basically, I was yeah. confessing a lot of what I didn't like, really, which is soul, soul feelings. I was confessing because I didn't feel like it. I was confessing that is sin. You know, I realized mm -hmm. that Jesus, when he was in Gethsemane, it says in the book of Hebrews that he feared in Gethsemane drops of blood, and he feared, but he didn't take on the spirit of fear. Yeah. Now, there's a difference between mm -hmm. feeling fear. And taking on the spirit of fear. Yeah. Because the Bible says that God will not give us the spirit of fear. Right. That's taking, that's making a choice that I am just a fearful right. person. So he never sinned. He never sinned. Yeah. But he felt it. But he didn't confess his feelings. Mm. He didn't say, oh God, I'm so sorry that I have feared this time. That I felt this fear. You see, we're yeah. doing that a lot of mm. times. Because we feel things. Oh, I feel like I don't like Bill today. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Therefore, I've got to confess it. No, you see, really, sin is making a conscious choice that I'm going to hate him in regards of how he acts. Right. I don't care how he is, I'm going to hate him. Because that's making, that's yeah. making a choice. Making a now, choice. when you make that conscious choice, that I, what you've done is you've forgotten who you are. You've forgotten that you're really a lover. You've yeah. forgotten that the lover lives in you. And that he will, he can love even though you don't like, right. you see. Yeah. He can love through you. Yeah. You've forgotten that. Yeah. And you've taken the devil's lie. Agreed and you him. have slipped out. And it's like having an adultery. Like, okay, yeah. I'm married to my precious husband, Scott. What if I slipped out and had an affair with somebody? Does that mean I'm not still married to him? Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't. It means I better come back and... You know what I do? I would praise God. Oh, Lord, thank you that you've already forgiven me for this. I forgot who I was. That's not who I am. Christ is in me. That's who I really am. That's what I would do. Mm -hmm. And I would say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you that your blood is so great that it's already cleansed me. So I do confess it as 
having a sin, mm -hmm. but then I say, but I'm not going to promise you I won't do it again mm -hmm. because I can't depend on myself to keep myself. I've got a permanent, permanent permanent <laughs> end. <laughs> I like that. That's great. That's right. That's that really is great. Good. That is great. Yeah, that's real liberation, I tell you, when you when the onus is off of you and trying to, you know, fix yourself and change yourself. Yes, and I'll tell you what. You see, slipping out, you know, God uses everything. He even uses what the devil misuses in us. He will to teach us how weak mm -hmm. we really are. It's not wrong to be weak. We, you know, a, a cup is just weak. It's just available to contain the content. Right. You know, the body is weak without the head. The temple, uh, you know, is weak without the God in the temple. It's meant to be the weak part of this union. It's meant to be the weakness. So we bash ourselves because we feel weak. We're meant to be weak. Yeah. So we have to make weakness right yeah. because we don't live by, but I don't live by that weakness. I right. live by the power of God that lives in me, which right. is Christ himself. So gosh, I see our times over again. <laughs> well, we'll come back next time. So thank you so much for joining us today and may God richly bless you. Goodbye. The more I try, the more I fall. You've been watching The Liberating Secret with Sylvia Pierce. We want to send a special thank you to all our supporters that make this program possible. If you've been blessed by this program and would like to contact Sylvia, you can write her at P.O. Box 43268, Louisville, Kentucky, 40253. That's P.O. Box 43268, Louisville, Kentucky, 40253. You can also find more of Sylvia's teachings on our website. The web address is www. Dot the liberating secret dot org. That's www.theliberatingsecret.org. And be sure to watch again right here, Monday through Friday, at the same time, for The Liberating Secret with author and teacher Sylvia Pierce. So until next time, may God richly bless you.